What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm Midwest Gatherer and we're out in the woods again. But today we're not looking for food. We're looking for something we can turn into laundry detergent. I know what you're thinking. You're in the wrong place to find that. It's in aisle seven of the grocery store. Well, it turns out there's something out here that we can turn into a laundry detergent. And we're going to see today how to do that and how effective it is through a little bit of testing. So come with me, let's figure out what this plant is and figure out how we're gonna turn the woods into laundry detergent. Here we have the horse chestnut tree and the leaves may look similar, especially if you're from Ohio, they look very uh, similar to the Buckeye tree, which uh, around here is synonymous with Ohio State football, uh, sometimes a dessert and certainly a fall nut that you find on the ground. But today we're really interested in the nut itself and what we can do with it. So I'll pick a few up off the ground here and we can look at what these nuts uh, look like. So right here is one of the horse chestnuts, not to be confused with the American chestnut. These are not edible. You eat these, you will have a very bad time. Symptoms can include paralysis, so don't eat these. Now they have saponins in them, which is what really gives them their soap-like characteristics. Uh, but it also means that bugs don't really like to mess with them much. And so when you treat your clothes with these, in some ways you're creating a, uh, a natural insecticide at the same time that you are cleaning your clothes. So I'm gonna walk around and gather up uh, a bunch of these and we'll throw them in a basket and then head inside and start processing them. can see some buckeyes that are still in their shell and you'll notice the shells are very spiky and they do feel kind of prickly when you touch them but the shells usually peel apart pretty easy when the nuts are ripe and the nut comes right out. Now the main way to tell buckeyes apart from horse chestnuts are in fact these hulls or husks or whatever you'd like to call them. On buckeyes they're not prickly and pointy like this, they are just kind of bumpy and otherwise smooth. So that's the main way to tell the, the nuts apart when the husks are still on. The leaves are a little bit different between the two, but we're not gonna spend a lot of time differentiating because you can use them, uh, both the buckeye and the chest, uh, horse chestnut tree, the same way for this. All right, so we've collected all of our horse chestnuts here. We're going to bring those in, in just a second, but first we got to get the rest of our experiment set up. So I have two identical white shirts and I've gone ahead with some permanent marker and drawn squares onto the shirts and above those squares I have listed the type of stain I'm going to place in that square. So we've got grass, mud, greasy food, and ketchup. I'm going to treat both these shirts the same way with these stains and then one of them is going to get washed with the horse chestnut detergent while the other one's going to get a standard Tide detergent like our, our clothes typically do. And we'll see how those stains fare. Uh, both these shirts were just purchased today. They are brand new. They have no stains on them currently. So we'll see uh, how, how well the detergent's able to move, remove stains. And also we'll see if the detergent stains the shirts in any sort of way. All right, I started out trying to cut these on a cutting board and you can see that it's not exactly an easy task. So uh, after I do this for like 15 or 20 minutes, which was probably 15 or 20 minutes too long, I started to use my brain and thought, well, how else can I break these apart? And then I realized if I threw them inside of an old sock and beat them with a hammer, it would probably work the same way. So that was what I did, and you can see here's the finished product. And basically you just empty out the sock and, you know, they're pretty much all beat up. If you have any that aren't, and you can kind of beat them up a little bit more, but this was a much faster approach, and you can see the ones that I did cut are in there. And I just went ahead and ground those with a uh, blender, and now we're ready to use them. You can see we've gone ahead and filled two jars with our mashed nuts, 
and we're gonna go ahead and cut up some lemon balm from the garden. This is not important, it just gives it a better smell. The horse chestnuts by themselves don't smell bad, but they don't particularly smell good either. I would categorize the smell as just kind of neutral. So the lemon balm is gonna give it a nice lemony scent, hopefully. We're gonna go ahead and fill those jars with some hot water, not quite boiling, just beneath boiling. And then we're gonna let that set for like 30 minutes and everything will infuse during that time. In terms of the amount of horse chestnuts to use, you saw about how much I put in. There's no hard and fast rules here. I guess depending on my results, maybe we'll tweak the recipe a little bit. Now we've let it set for a little bit and you can see that our water has turned kind of milky white. We're going to go ahead and use an old coffee strainer to strain out the solids from the liquids and we will discard the solids. And we're left with a nice bowl full of this white kind of milky liquid and we're going to go ahead and put that back into a jar. And you can see, even after just pouring it in the jar, it's already pretty sudsy, like soap might be. Now let's see how well it cleans. Alright, here are our two shirts. You can see them labeled in the bottom left corners, and you can see the stains. The greasy food stain is like... Uh, Cheetos or something similar. I, you know, we ate those and then just rubbed our fingers onto the t-shirts. And the stains sat on these t-shirts for about 24 hours before I washed them. Now, to keep things consistent, I wanted to measure the amount of liquid I used. So for both the uh, horse chestnut and the normal laundry detergent, I went ahead and used three tablespoons of solution or detergent. Uh, that way the results were comparable by volume. Now, as we start to kind of look at our results, you can see here's the horse chestnut. It completely removed the, quote, greasy food stain, and it did a pretty good job on the ketchup stain, which again, sat and dried for over 24 hours. We see it also removed the greasy food stain and removed the ketchup stain pretty well. The ketchup stain on, on the liquid detergent was not quite as bad as the horse chestnut one, so I'd say they cleaned about the same with those two stains. Now if we compare the grass stains and mud stains on the horse chestnut to the grass and mud stains on the regular detergent, I think the regular detergent did a better job with the grass stain. Uh, however, it did about the same job with the mud stain, maybe not even quite as good. So all in all, I would say it's roughly comparable per volume to normal detergent. Well, thanks for sticking around and watching this video. Hopefully you've learned something, and maybe in the future I will do some additional testing. Uh, for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.